now. All right, hey guys, welcome to FSC Live number six. Uh, we have a lot of really cool things in store for everyone. We have Brian Hare back here. Uh, Drea Boland. What's your name? <laughs> I almost called you Justin, yeah. Justin is not here. Justin's on vacay, uh, hopefully doing something fun. It's a vacay. We got Christina VA. Cavalcanti running the show. Um, and we have, so we'll, we'll get to Brian in a second because we'll talk about what There's he's got. There's plenty of time for me. What he's got going on, but uh, we have a really cool class for you guys today. Also, we have your questions that you submitted through Instagram. So we will be answering those questions. Dre is pulling those up now. She has them. And uh, Thad is sitting in. Yeah, I think he needs sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> it's bright on this side. So yeah, I didn't realize how bright it was on this side of, uh, of the cameras. Yeah, Thad's having a hard time. So welcome to the table. Glad instead to be here. of <laughs> hiding uh, somewhere. I'm trying to summon the announcer voice. Yes, with those you're beautiful doing a good job. milky complexions and those bright blue eyes, that probably looks fantastic with yeah. those lights <laughs> up on you two sitting next to each other. Yeah. So... <laughs> All right, so and we have the free wheel back behind me. Uh, we're giving away some cool stuff today. And also, like I said uh, on the last show, if we hit 150 people live, which we'll be watching for, oh, yeah. so make sure you're posting and sharing that with your friends to join us live. Um, we will give away something awesome, we decided. And somebody, well, somebody. Wait, weren't we going to spin for someone? Yeah, somebody that's watching live will spin the wheel. Um, also, uh, there was one more thing, and I forget. What else we were going to talk about? No. We talked about the Andis Clippers last week, but I did get more Clippers from Andis, so thank you to them. I have reviews coming up with the Clippers. Um, I just posted a video of a brand new haircut uh, that was requested by some people. We put that up uh, a couple hours ago, so you can check that out later on. Um, and that's pretty much it. So make sure you're sharing this. Oh, and the chat is open. Dre has got that. I'll probably pull it up on my phone. So let's. Head over to Brian. <laughs> All the way over to All me. All the way over there. And uh, let's see what he's got going on for the class tonight. All right. So, hi. Here we are. Uh, all right. So, I wanted to get into a little bit of color with you guys, have a little bit of fun, but do something that we're also seeing lots and lots of. I feel like the internet is very, very saturated these days with fantasy colors. And I wanted to come up with something. I, I wanted to take this opportunity really to just have some fun and really just go over some of the do's and don'ts and the basics of just fantasy colors in general. I think one of the great things about uh, really just what fantasy colors have become, I think they've become, they've gone from being something that hairdressers and kids that work at Hot Topic have to now everybody's got it. I have clients that are doctors. I have all, like, it's just, it's all over the spectrum these days. So I definitely think that it's something everybody should get a little more comfortable with. So that's hopefully what this is going to do. Um, I think one of the reasons that I love fantasy colors so much is because without people realizing it, it's probably the highest maintenance color that you can give to somebody because there is the pre-lightening step that most people are going to need before you can use any kind of fantasy colors. Uh, most fantasy colors that really give those vibrant results that you want are just temporary colors. So if they want to upkeep that, then you're going to have to see them a little bit more often. And then finally when the day comes that they decide they don't want it anymore, then you've got a color correction. So it's a whole bundle of color services all rolled into one, and most people don't even realize that when they get into it. Uh, let's see. I wanted to go over one of my big things, an analogy that I use a lot for my guests when they come in wanting things because, like I said, it's all over the internet. Everybody wants some form, it seems, this these days. But not everybody can get what they see online. So I came up with this analogy, and we've all now sort of adopted it and changed it a little bit here in the salon that really just helps people understand it a little bit better to let them know what they would be getting themselves into if they wanted that. I use this opportunity when people talk about wanting, because I'm sure you've all experienced it, the people that come in with the pictures of beautiful silver and lavender hair have jet black hair, like level one, and then that's just a whole dialogue that needs to happen surrounding that. Um, so I do take the opportunity to go into explaining a little bit of the levels of lift, which will help them understand just color a little bit better in general. 
and the way that I or what I tie into that to sort of create the uh, the visual for them I actually created the visual for you guys tonight and that's using construction paper and crayons the first one it was supposed to be brown but I couldn't see in the package so it's a very light brown I went with four colors that I three you commonly see in uh, fantasy colors and then the other one I just figured you know why not because YOLO it's my class so I went with Red crayon, blue crayon, yellow crayon, and then a pretty lavender. On this lighter brown, you can see, and from what I'm picking up on the camera, it, it is adding some tone, especially with the red and the blue, but it's not really showing up necessarily as a vibrant color. I explained to them if I can get you, or if you're starting at a brown and I put this over, it's really going to wash out. You're not going to see things like yellow. It might rich it up a little bit. And really, I think this is just because it's a crayon, because we know that lavender is not going to show up at all on brown. And then I explain <coughs> in your levels of lift, and this is something that hairdressers need to understand as well, orange is going to be some place that a lot of people end up. Hold on. How did I hold the last one? Like this. <laughs> so well, I want to try to be a little consistent. No, the consistency is good. <coughs> so again, you've got your red. Orange is when you – if you can get somebody to an orange, red is one of the only colors that I feel – well, obviously orange, but – Red is one of the other colors than what you lifted to that I think will show up when you lift somebody to an orange. And they'll still get that nice red, which is good because if you can only get them to an orange, chances are it's because they've got really, really dark, maybe even previously colored black hair. And red looks really good with black. The blue, again, as we know, color wheel is really just going to more cancel out the orange. Again, because it's a crayon, it sort of does show up somewhat, but... We know when it comes to hair, it's really just going to kind of go away and just sort of muddy out. The yellow, again, the best you're going to get out of that is a little bit of richness, but you're not going to get any of that yellow that you're looking for. And then even on paper, the lavender is almost non-existent. So that's a good visual. I think one of the most, one of the biggest mistakes, because it's one of the most realistic ones, is we can get people to yellow. This is a very attainable color for most heads when it comes to pre-lightening. But the problem is, Yellow is a primary color, and anything that goes over it, it's going to mix and create a secondary pretty much. The red's not going to show up as a vibrant red. You're really going to start to orange out your reds if you try to go over yellow with it. The blue, unfortunately, you're going to be looking at some green tones that if that's what they're looking for, cool. But if they don't want green, you're certainly going to give it to them with that blue. And if not the day that you give it to them, the second that blue starts to fade, it's going to turn green if that's yellow underneath. Yellow, I love yellow hair, obviously. So if you can get them to yellow and then go over it with yellow, you're set. You're golden because then even as it fades, that yellow is going to be behind it to make it look pretty. And unfortunately, the lavender, it's really just going to work as a toner. If you use that nice, pretty silver, lavendery color, but you've only lifted them to yellow, it's just going to really tone the hair more than anything. And then finally, dream scenario, but it's the most realistic if you really want to achieve true, powerful, bright, vibrant colors, you're going to have to get that hair as white as you can. Again, this is a visual that makes sense to you guys, but when you explain that to a guest, they understand. When that client sits down with that jet black hair, and I explain, yes, that is a gorgeous lavender in that picture, but I have to literally get you, with bleach, as white as a piece of paper for that to even show up. That analogy, then they get it, then they start to have more realistic expectations. So... I hope that helps. Please feel free to steal that analogy. It, it works for me, so I hope it works for you. All right. Do we have any questions or anything yet? Awesome. No, the only question that we have so far, which I know you're going to go over, is what color line we used on the, on oh, the mannequins. Oh, of course. And then, um, but we literally have people on from all over the country. Um, Hello. Actually, a lot of people from America this time. So it's pretty cool. California, Michigan, well, Nashville. Nashville. <laughs> right. So, uh, so we have a ton of uh, great people on right now. Uh, so, if anybody has questions, make sure that you post them, and we'll we'll ask Brian. Yeah, just throw it out there. You got to interrupt me because I'll never stop talking if you don't. That's true. From America. America. From America. <laughs> no, I say America. All right. I don't. Okay. Know. I so say America. you say America. America. <laughs> I, I wanted to also uh, I wanted to have a pre done for class obviously because I'm not going to process this wash it dry it and just waste everybody's time we got things to do so I wanted to have a pre done I sat there playing with all the different colors the color line that we used for these mannequins are it's from the the Vero K pack by Joyco they're the color intensity I think is the name of the colors 
And they're really fantastic because I had no idea. They have got so many different colors. And Christina had tons of fun when she went to the store and pretty much found. She got like one of everything. So I was like a kid in a candy store yesterday. Um, I find some of where I get to play artist and I feel like a painter and have a little bit more fun is not just taking what's straight out of the tube. But maybe if I had a little bit of this from this color and then maybe a little bit of this to create whatever. So for the pre-done, I went with more, obviously, in this purples, pinks, family. And what I'm going to do for you tonight is going to be warmer colors. It's going to be oranges, yellows, reds. There's a little pink in there. Um, so you're going to get to see me do that. So when it's getting applied to the head, don't freak out because it does not look like that at all. But I did do the same technique. So I think, all right, I can start with this to show you, and then I'll go through her hair. I started with a foil placement on the head. I took out a little bit of a football, an American football shaped section at the back of the head. Some people call it cat's eye, whatever you're more comfortable with. So a little point to point section in the back, which left me an, a good size halo around the head. I then took the colors that I wanted the highlights to be. In this case, they are a yellow and I believe hot pink. And I alternated them coming around to the top on both sides. Then I let down that cat's eye section from the top and just popped a couple more of these highlights in there. They're not really highlights, but a couple more of these foils right in there. And what that's going to do is it's going to help make sure that I have a nice banded dimension throughout this because the whole point of how we're doing these this color application is so that everything blends really well. So these highlights are going to make sure that it's th there's a pop of color that stands out from everything else and doesn't blend. After I put those foils in, I just did a root retouch with the color that I wanted to be my root color, <coughs> my fake root color. In this case, I used red. Okay, now, everybody's seen this pretty blowout. You saw the picture on Instagram because I'm really, I'm about to tear it up. I'm going to flip her over and do all kinds of stuff. All right, so one last time. She's pretty. Thanks. All right, so when you come under and start to finger through the hair. I used two different shades of pink for the highlight. You can see here I used a softer pink. And then for the more bold band, which is also the one that's around her face, I went with uh, a deeper, richer pink. Then for what you're going to see, I was calling them like color locks because they just reminded me of dreadlocks but with color and the hair. Uh, I used three different colors for this purple gal right here. I used... One is called light purple, one was called orchid. Uh, orchid, and then the third one, I wanted something that was going to be a little bit of a mirror of the root color, but lighter. So for the root, I used indigo, so for the third color, which you can see in here, <coughs> it's uh, mostly clear with a little bit of indigo and a little bit of the cobalt blue, which is cool because it does add a less intense but still deeper color in there. And Drea actually referred to it as looking like denim. So that was a pretty cool. It reminds me of the ocean. All right. So that's that. We're going to be doing the same technique placement, but with different colors on this mannequin. Good? Solid. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Brian, I have a question. Go for it. With this, this is one of those things you really got to make sure that you are completely upfront with them. I mean, we, I can, it's all about how often they're going to wash. You know, play around with the colors if you're trying a new line or if you get a new one in. Play around on something to see. Like, in, I remember in old lines, I knew if somebody went with blue, it was going to last a lot longer than if they went with the purple. Or sometimes the pink would last way longer than the red. It just, it's going to depend on how the color is made. And then you got to talk about, you know, the porosity of the hair, the health of the hair, how often they're going to shampoo, how often they're going to blow dry, flat iron, because this is going to last the longest in healthy hair. So, y y and you can't lie to them about it. You can't be like, oh, yeah, you'll get like six weeks out of this, because then they're mad in like a week when <laughs> they see it really start to fade. And then, grr. other piece of advice that I make sure everybody goes home with no more white towels, no more white pillowcases. 
no white scarves. You just you got to be careful because all these temporary colors they're gonna bleed. So all right, to start this off, I just want to get it set up and then I'll just like keep talking while I work. So I've got all this root retouch. The easiest way to start this, I'm gonna have her head tilted forward. So I suggest uh, I use because we do so much balayage, as you've seen. I use the cellophane that we have for balayage and I'll tuck it actually into the cape and drape it along the back because this is, you know, it's it's a it's a color that whatever it touches it's going to stain. So try to keep everything nice and neat as you're working and it's just going to make your cleanup a lot easier on this. So now that I've got her tilted forward, I'm going to move everything else forward because it's just going to make it a little easier as I work. Flip up all my foils flip up all that hair because we're going to start at the back hairline and work our way to the front hairline. Oh, that's beautiful red. I got some gloves. I'm just moving stuff at this point. Yeah, I'm going to go over the make sure you have before you start momentarily. How's it looking, Matt? Looks good. Do you love it? I mean, you haven't done anything yet. <laughs> I've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> he's done. He's, he's, done. He's, he's, he's actually just about to drop the mic and walk You're off. welcome. Yeah. All right. So the colors that I did for today, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to do warmer colors. I wanted to shoot for something that felt a little bit more like sunrise and a little less like autumn. So I am working with reds and oranges, but I'm also working with pinks because I think adding that twist of pink is what keeps it from looking too much like fall, but can still be really pretty. So I've mixed three colors that are gonna be her color locks. The first one I took from the same line, um, Fiery Coral, which was a really pretty deep orange color. And I just added some more red to it just to give it a little bit more depth. Uh, my next color is definitely my lightest, aside from the highlights. I went with orange and then mixed in a good bit of yellow so that I'm going to have sort of that, uh, I think of it as like an in-between step between what that bright yellow highlight around the face is going to be and then that deep red at the base. So it's like Orange Crush. It looks delicious. <laughs> and then finally, because I wanted, again, like with the other one, something that mirrors the root color a little bit, I did take red, but then I swirled in some hot pink with it as well. So that's going to have... Uh, a slight variation to the root so that it's still going to have a cool dimension to it. Hey, Brian, let's just start. I, I do want to address um, somebody was talking about the retouch is going to be a lot. Um, they said, I'm, I'm licensed, but that's a lot, but very pretty. And I think uh, the big thing would be the retouch of this would be completely different. It usually is. I mean, because the you're not really going to be able to go in because this is not an exact block coloring that you're doing, so it's going to be too hard to try to section out. So if they come back and still want a full head of something, it's probably going to involve you know, cleaning that color out, whatever your chosen method is. I know there's a zillion of them online, whether it's using bleach with shampoo or 10N or color remover, whatever your preferred method is, you're probably going to want to get all this out and clean out the palette before you go in with something else because... They may want to do something else. They may want to do something similar, but, oh, maybe a little less of the red or something like that. So cleaning out that palette before you go is going to be your best bet. Yeah, and I think when you look at the the guest that's going to get this, um, they're getting this. They, they probably aren't somebody that wants to keep their hair the same all the time. Right. So it's not going to be that you're, you're going to do the exact same colors in the exact same placement. They probably want to change it up. So that and it could be for an event. Right. Could be for a party. It could be for Halloween. Yeah. Could Why be don't just we because. make you more often? Because I got too many good ideas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could. All this ends up giving you, as you can see with this one, is just a super dimensional look. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing to say you can't do this with, like, a 6, 7, 8 N. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of the fun of tonight, right. we're using something yeah. more exciting. Cool. Right, and there are plenty of people that to save that, I will leave a root color. Do one of the easiest ways to get max color without an insane amount of bleaching to the whole head is I'll just do balayage on somebody. 
because that covers enough of the head as far as lightness goes to then add a fun color to it with still working in their root color to it. And then you get a really pretty fade into whatever fantasy color you're wanting to play with. Now, this is also great to like overlay, like to do that. And then if you were looking for like a really vibrant red, to like color your reds with like the normal red for like the longevity, and then hit them with one of these over top of that, right? To get a really super vibrant red. True story, bro. All right. All right. What you have a question? <laughs> yeah, I have. All right. So while we're on this path with um removing of uh fantasy colors and whatnot, one of the questions is, um, Uni Walker has a client who does fantasy colors and likes to switch it up a lot. She usually lightens her regrowth and then soap caps on her mids and ends to remove the old color. Okay. What are the thoughts on this, on the best ways to remove old color or maybe a color line that fades more quickly than... Uh, they used to. Not so much I was going to say, the problem is a lot, every single fantasy line has been tweaking and promoting that they have longer lasting colors. To me, that's more of how it lasts in your guest hair is going to be the porosity of their hair, how well they hold on to certain colors. It's just going to be a guessing game as to yeah, which I have, works more, better for each one of them. Yeah, I have a client who I put in the uh, orchid highlights in to her hair, and she came back six weeks later, and they were still there. Oh, yeah. Like, well, Dre well, and I were joking about it yesterday. My good friend, Jean, we put three different colored foils in her hair. Two of them have faded out completely, and it's been like a year, and one of them still has <laughs> spots of blue like still in there. All right, so is that good? Did that do we answer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're done. You can come over here and sit down. All right. Okay, bye. All right, so what I'm doing now, when you go into this, obviously you need gloves, and I always make sure I have a towel because I'm going to wipe off in between every single section to try to keep this as neat as possible. Is that enough? Yeah, because if you don't use gloves, you're going to be getting some really funny looks at the bar later on. Oh, yeah. And then, like, when you pick your nose, you get it all over your face, <laughs> and it's just awful. Increasing the funny looks. All right. So what I'm doing, I'm, there is no exact sectioning to this. If you guys have seen videos with me before, you know that's just how I roll. So... I'm using my foils to help me section my color. So I lifted up that bottom row of foils. I was left with this whole patch underneath. So I just split it into three because I've got three colors. So let Why the not? dimension begin, shall we? So now I take my color. This is the orange with the yellow. I go up close to where I stopped with the root retouch. Get plenty in there. Work up close to the root retouch with the brush. I don't want to get too much on the brush because that brush is going to continue on through the rest of the head. And then I'm just using my fingers to kind of mash that together. Because the colors will mix. They will give you an in-between color, and that will actually have a nice little fade. It will work. So keep that in mind in case you decide to use colors that are just not really going to go together that well. Like if you've got a green root and you want to smash it together with an orange, just take heed of what that's going to look like. It might not be what you're looking for. That's why I like to use this technique on colors that sort of live close to each other on the color wheel because then I don't really have to worry about how that's going to smash out. And then we get our third color. Smash, smash, smash. Smush, smush, smush. Brian smash. Yep. This is that really pretty, the red with the hot pink mixed in. It's going to look awesome. Then when it's done, I just give it a little twist. That way it just keeps it sectioned and pretty. Make sure you wipe. Say, sorry, towel. Bye. <laughs> but it comes off the gloves quite nicely. So I don't have to worry about it. I can touch. And I'm fine. And you got more tattoos. Yeah. I colored in my tats. All right. So now, as far as what to put where... Just take a visual count of everything and see, okay, well, I'm going to be putting this right over this orange, so maybe I won't do orange because there's a reason that I took this away. I want as much dimension as possible. Uh, again, another thing that, that brings me to a good point. When you are doing this, also realize that the smaller of a section you take, the more this is going to try to blend together. If you take bigger, fatter sections, it's going to be something closer to a block color technique 
So the colors are going to stand out more against each other because they're going to be in bigger doses. It's pretty. Pull that through, blend it into the root, give it a twist, and move on with life. Do you love it? <laughs> So then I'm just going to start to bring this down. Bring these colors, well, bring these sections together. I'm going to try to pull this one around so you can see. I am ripped. <laughs> All that shoveling I did around my car. <laughs> Whereas. I'm so thankful for my wonderful bosses who shoveled out the entire driveway so that I can get my car out now. That's exciting. <laughs> Thanks, guys. He hasn't been to Wawa in a week. I know. And then we're just going to keep going. That's why I have her slightly tilted forward. As I get up around the top, you'll see I'm going to bring her head back, just in case I forget to say it. But I have her tilted forward a little bit so that I can get under and grab this hair. I'm just going to take this whole section right here. Let's see. Let's do the pretty red and pink. How are we doing? We got any questions, Dre? You are right. solely manning the, I the know. ship right now. All right, so do you want me to – I'll focus on questions that are being asked live right now. Okay. I'm just saying. I said okay. Um. Oh, this is a good one. Um, <laughs> uh, I was hoping you were going to go with a bad one. She's screaming. <laughs> like, so if this isn't your question, really sorry. I think they're all great questions. No, they're all great questions. This is why I do question. that every week. <laughs> um, Bethany Parisi asks, on how do you go about pricing fantasy collars? Um, that's a good question. Obviously, you're going to want to take into account whatever you're doing for prep. I mean, if you're going to get somebody, if you're going to have to do like a, a full platinum card on somebody, whatever the lightning process is, you charge them accordingly for that. And then you're just really going to discuss with the salon what to charge for this kind of stuff. Generally, it's going to be time consumption, product consumption. It's going to vary from place to place in different parts of the country and world and everything. But I think the biggest chunk of it is to make sure you don't slight yourself on the lightning process. Because generally, once you get, and then, well, and then there's the whole step of if you choose to charge for the blow dry, because there has to be a blow dry between the lightning and the fantasy color, or else it's just not going to stick. So that's definitely going to be something that the salon's going to have to chat about. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong side of the head. I'm sorry. What's that? And I mean, obviously, there's going to be a major difference between what you'd price for maybe a couple foils of a fantasy color versus what Brian's doing today, which is essentially an entire head of multiple fantasy colors. Oh, it's not essentially. It's literally. All right, literally. An entire head no, of fantasy yeah, colors. No, yeah. That's... Yes. And like Brian said, anything that you're doing, you're, you're basing it on time. So we're... A haircut costs less than a full foil because of the time and product usage. So if you look at any kind of fantasy colors, a lot of those are more expensive than regular color. Uh, how much is a tube of, of that color? Let's just say it's like, you know, we, we all know. Yeah. So yeah. It, yeah. if you, you know, you're spending that, you might use a whole entire tube. Like Brian just realized the other day. That Actually, I have to give Thad credit for this one. Thad realized the other day that you're obviously not mixing it with developer but you're using the same amount of product so when you would use two ounces of color plus two ounces of developer you'd have four ounces of product developer is really cheap now you're using four ounces of pure pigment and almost so maybe a tube maybe two tubes so you're actually spending a lot more money on the product but so what matt's just realizing just now we really hope you like this class because, as you can tell between these two mannequins, it was expensive. Yeah, it's like a $50 <laughs> uh, color job. 
but yeah, so just base it on your time, but then take product cost into that as well. But most importantly, this will take a good amount of time and you want to charge for that. Agreed. Matt's going to actually use the mannequins next week for a pixie. Uh, Brian, can you just go over one more time? Is one of the highlights the base as well, or what did you put? No, uh, for the, I'm sorry, I don't even think I said it. These highlights in these foils are alternating between, I believe one of them is the hot pink, and one of them is just yellow, like straight yellow. Okay. Because as you can tell by anything that I've ever done on these videos, and this mannequin behind me, I really like those pieces around the face nice and light, no matter what you're doing. So I've mixed that. Uh, Eric would like to know, how long does it take you for the whole process, lightning and all? Huh. <laughs> well, yesterday, yesterday, was, yesterday was It's just a quite quick a color tip. Journey. Uh, Brian, it's just a quick uh, color tip, right? Yeah, it's just it's real quick. This is like five minutes. You can do this in a shampoo bowl. <laughs> That's um, what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Get it done, Brian. No, it's just, I mean, that's, again, that's something that's going to depend on how like much you're doing. I mean, the root retouch and foils on this took me 25 minutes maybe to put in, half hour, and then whatever time it's taking me to do these, this color, keeping in mind that I'm also stopping and talking and holding my angles and flexing really hard for the camera. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. if you wanted to, if she came in at a level six and showed you this video on YouTube, I mean, you need to find a whole day that you're going to spend with her because you're going to have to get her light enough to pull off these colors and have them show up, but, you know, have some integrity left in her hair, which is going to be a lengthy process. And the cool thing about this too, just so everybody knows as well, like this is obviously an extreme version. Not too many people are going to come in requesting multiple uh, fantasy colors on their really long hair. But this is something that we've been doing for years. I don't, I don't know where to look. Um, this is something we've been doing for years because um, – but we did it, we called it uh, Color Dreads, and we were doing it with hair color to create multi-dimensional color. So this exact same technique, you could do this as a level 5 base with, you know, a level 7 coming through it and a level 8. And just mix and matching a few bowls of color to create dimension all over somebody's head. So I don't want people to think just because they're watching you do fantasy color right now that this isn't very versatile for other techniques as well. Oh, yeah. It's all about the versatility. All about. That's how I like it. I want to give a shout out to Michael from Minneapolis because I was in Minneapolis and it is so cold there. Oh, you poor thing. That <coughs> I don't blame him for being inside watching watching this, this video. Well, then this nice. How many people are color outside color watching this video? A nice beach sunset is for you, yeah, Minneapolis. There you go, Matt. How many people are outside watching this video? Uh, there could be a lot of people outside. <laughs> In You're about to be one of them. Western, <laughs> in the western part of America. Brian, but how did you uh, place the foils? The foils, all right. I always have a really hard time. Can you help me come up with a better term than cat's eye? The shape of, okay, when I say cat's eye, because I use it a lot, yeah, but not everyone's from America. It's the shape of a football if you're from America. It's the shape of like a hey, cartoon Arnold, eyeball if you're not in America. <laughs> it's pointed on the end, round, gets wide, and then comes back to a point. It's a cat's eye. The shape of a cat's eye. <laughs> so what I is it? The shape. Is there of? a lot of confusion on this? Oh my god! Go back in the old videos. I oh. say a cat's eye, and it, like no one knows what I'm talking about. I well, felt crazy for a minute. Like a rounded marquee, maybe. No, because it definitely know. comes to a point. I mean, it's pointed on both ends. No, is how I'm taking it. Like oh yeah, yeah. So if you took a marquee yeah. diamond and, and you rounded round off, I was gonna say what the heck? Diamond so, shapes. Yeah, uh, marquee. Well, uh, I was saying that. I'm like, what the heck is a marquee? Hey, like, if people don't know what like, stuff differently, ladies. It, if nobody knows what a cat's eye is, who's just going to know a marquee? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, a lot of people now. All right. Simmer so down. simmer down. That's a cat's eye. I took a cat's eye section. Am I clean? Yes. Just if you got color on section. his arm. What? If you got color on your arm, I don't think we would notice. <laughs> I, think I would. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. So Brian. off the back of the head, I took a cat's eye section at the high point. So the point was here. Can you see? Point was here. Got wide. Came back down. What that ends up giving you is a halo all the way around her hairline. I started in the back. 
not right in the dead center just because I didn't want to, but you could, I suppose, if you wanted to. I started with a foil on either side and kept it pretty mirrored, just going with that halo section up until I got to the front hairline. You can kind of see when I lift the hair up. Can you? Eh, sort of here. When I lift that hair up, you see it's following the hairline, the one pink, the other pink. Like bird, that like pink. Sort of. I mean, they, they stayed it more of like a visor the whole way. Oh. So they were horizontal. Back to horizontal. Yeah, with a slight diagonal just to go with the section, but okay. more horizontal. That good? That adequate? Yes. Yeah, I mean, we can see them right there. So I think if we just... Oh, yeah. You could see... And them. then there's that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I took the cat's eye section down and popped a couple foils inside of it. There you go. Oh, you did. In the cat's eye, marquee, oh, okay. football no, no, section. Someone referenced it as uh, Stewie what Griffin's head. Color? Yeah, Stewie Griffin. <laughs> Stewie Griffin. <laughs> Perfect. Who yeah, said that? Yeah, I yeah. love them. Calypso. Or, yeah, Calypso. Calypso? C Cal no, that's not even close. Calypso is from um, uh, Calispo. Twisted Metal, right? Calispo. Well, tell them how to say your name. <laughs> so that I can tell you how much I love you. Because yeah, I, I went straight for uh, Hey Arnold, but Stewie's a, a better reference. Totes. All right. I like to take this section that is the, the top of the head, the heart, and just make that a nice big one because then it just gives a really nice overlay to everything. Not a heart shape, like the heart. It's the meat. We're all Sorry, I forget now. that you guys can't really hear Christina, but I can. <laughs> Amy, just to answer your question, she asked where do we get the mannequin heads. Um, we have them on freesoneducation.com. Yep. Plug. Plug. Let's see. <laughs> Plug. <laughs> Let me just throw that in there. I'm you can get them at freesaloneducation.com. You can also get the, uh, the, the stickers on uh, freesaloneducation.com too, so you can have a cool neck tattoo. Yeah. I think I'm going to stop teaching classes. This is so much easier. <laughs> Over here, just watching you. Okay, I'll just do balayage every week. I am Matt, gonna split get, this like, just to make sure. Because one thing that I can tests? say, when you first start working with fantasy colors, you really want to make sure that you pay really close attention to saturation, because these are not colors that are going to. They don't have developer. They're not going to swell. They're not going to move. It's not going to run through anything that this color is not touching it will not color you will end up with lots of spots of oh whoops because you didn't push it all the way through like really wring it out and make sure that you've got it through the whole section that way you're not going to end up doing all this work and then oh crap like i need to go back in because there's spots that i missed <laughs> or whatever <laughs> Christina just went through and moved all of the cameras to change the, to change the heat. It's all right. Mine's still on me. We can just yeah, watch yeah, me. Yeah, we're good. No, I'm sure of that. We're good. No, I know. Okay, we're oh. good. No, it's fine. I didn't realize my hand was over that. Though. That was really <laughs> we now have thumbprints. All right. So <laughs> while I'm finishing this up, because I'm still, I'm just alternating it. I'm getting ready to tilt the head back. If anything crazy happens, I'll throw it out there. Do you guys want to hit the Instagram questions? Yeah. Because there was a lot this week. You guys were awesome. All right. So I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down. Get it, girl. Get All it. right. Yeah, she's not going to pick the best one. Sad. Stop it. Uh, Tinkerbell. <laughs> right. There is no know. best. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> realizing. Okay, here we go. Tinkerbell would like to know, how would you, how would or could you deal with a veteran stylist that thinks he slash she knows it all and refuses to try to learn anything new, different, to ac accommodate the flow of guest requests, requesting new things? I love when that happens. Okay. Personally. Um. But go ahead. Sorry. Wait. So I just want to understand yeah. the question. Okay. So. So, there's how would you do? There's a stylist who has been in the salon for, for a long time. Long time. Yeah. Been on it many many years and refuses to try or learn new techniques to accommodate trends and whatnot. Okay. All right. And then what about the clients? 
To accommodate the client. Oh, uh, okay. So, like, so, let's say a new client wants balayage. Yeah. And, then, and they call, and the, and the stylist is like, "What? I don't do balayage. So, I'm not doing it? Is that, like, the case? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think Brian's right. That's fantastic. That's I mean, yeah. that's fantastic We've for somebody a lot of that's hungry that and young. That happened and a lot in my old salon because I was there right around the time that Ombre was starting to hit big. And, you know, the, the old veteran stylist well, I'm not giving somebody roots. Like, that's ridiculous. And I'm like, that is totally cool. Like, you go right on ahead and not do that. I'm going to bust my hump to learn how to do it, and I'll take all of them. That's I was, uh, was going to say. An owner asking on I, how to, yeah. I was going to say, if this is an owner asking, I feel like. Yeah, and we'll probably know because I think Tinkerbell is on there live. Yeah. Um, if it's an owner, that's a personal choice as far as the owner as to whether or not they want to continue to have that stylist in the right. salon like. yeah i mean that's a tough that's tough because obviously I, i'm so i'm trying to remember that that a lot of salons like there's just so many different scenarios within salons um because i would say i would not have them working like one of these days when we're like old like i just i think about that a lot like one of these days we're all gonna be like old you know well, at sure. the same time together <laughs> and we're gonna be like doing have done hair for we're gonna all be retired on the island. Forty years, right? And we're yeah, right and we're gonna go island. retire. But but when you think about that, like you have to keep up on the trends. I mean, that's what keeps your business growing. And if we're gonna retire and we're going to, you know, have a successful business, you have to do the latest things, especially if you're in a business where there's only a couple stylists. Like Honestly, okay. right now, even like my niece is will be tw- or she is twenty. I'm be 20. 36, yeah. right? Am I 36? I think you are. Okay. Yeah, way to so, shout out your age there. But no, like she even knows, and we try to stay current and we're active on social media, you know. We're but, active adults. But what I, what I mean is <laughs> right now there are things that we don't know, you know, that aren't yeah. popular. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's it's happening no matter what age you are. Right. But you have to be open to it, to anything I think to be in a to work in a salon team environment. Yeah, right. You know. All right. Well, what if if this stylist who has been in the industry for years and she doesn't feel like she needs to grow as a stylist because she has her existing clientele, they keep coming back to her. She gives them what they want. Uh, it sounds like Dre is about, about to put it. her foot down on something. No, like, <laughs> like honestly, it's like, it's like, I'm not gonna do this. Do you let anymore. them just be and exist in that environment? I mean, if and this is a coworker thing. Well, this like, is I get so this is a it? different kind of question because now you're not having guests come in and requesting, and she's not turning down clients. So that's right. what you're saying. So that would be a different scenario if she is so booked, like she's booked out, right. like always, always booked. Yeah. And her clients want what they want, and she gives them that. Then that's I think it's I don't fine. see a problem yeah. with that. Yeah. Do but you? But if she is the lady during the class, that's. Uh, uh, Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. Well, we did that this way. Oh no, I did it this way. Uh, then that might be a problem. Yeah. Like you know, it depends on their attitude. It's a tough. I think it's tough too because when you look at our industry, like I went into so many salons to teach, and right away you can tell the people that have been, sat mm-hmm. through hundreds of pointless classes. Like the p- people were sent to their salon that d- they just don't know enough. And, and they're trying to educate them. So th- there becomes like that kind of, I get that the ego happens too. Like there's, there's a lot of factors in it, but I do think that the, um, that a lot of times these, they, they should be reaching for more, like, uh, go to Sassoon somewhere, like maybe push them to go learn techniques from people that are, you know, different. I don't, I don't know the answer. Or I don't know. Because you class have- that's going to make them do something that they're not that they don't already quote unquote know. Yeah. Like yeah. If but you the- go to a Sassoon class and even just breaking it back down to like the basics in those classes, I've known hairdressers that have been doing it for 20 years and they'll still go to those classes because it's, it's an ass kick to. Sure. But there are young people coming up in whatever academy. There's so many different schools now. Oh, yeah, there are yeah, so yeah. many different. You don't different- need to go there. So That's we're, whoever's coming in to teach. Yeah. But what I'm saying is whoever's coming in to teach you, you probably could learn especially if it's a young person at least one thing something. from them yeah you know even so, if it's a what not to do it's still something to learn exactly so i don't think any class is pointless i mean i'm sure there are they are out there 
but hopefully if they're actually an educator that are getting gigs, like there is something going on with what they're preaching, you know? I, I think my big problem is when you look at how the industry was when I jumped out of like the corporate uh, educating kind of salon thing it turned it turned so much into let's just get a bunch of art uh, not art like hairstylists let's teach them our product knowledge and then that's their goal is to go out and just sell so they end up going into the salon but they don't really know uh technique and structure right. and all these things so we were saturating the industry i think with not super talented people and now you look at the industry and you, I mean, we have hair like a boss on here. Like, there's a ton of people that are independent hairdressers now. I mean, look at well for the past seven years, everything's gone independent. That's yeah. why you see young entrepreneurs exactly because everybody was sick of that whole. Everyone's their own thing. boss, right? Yeah. And now you've got a great education that you can get. You just have to pay for it and and get people to come in. But now I think is a whole different no, story, right? Because now you can go on YouTube and get anything for free, right? Yeah, like you us, know. like this. <laughs> right. Speaking of free, how's it going over there, Brad? <laughs> I'm free as a bird. Free as a bird. We already went over the color cost of that. Th- this uh, series, this uh, episode is not free. You know what this color is reminding me of? Now that I'm seeing it all like juicy and tendrily now, it reminds me of Starbursts. Uh, I was gonna say gushers. Nice. That sounds delicious. Right. And okay. Then once the yellow <laughs> comes right. out to play, shut your mouth. All right. Let's do another uh, <laughs> question. Oh okay, yeah, this is my last one. So if you want to watch. Okay, let's watch Brian's last one. I mean, wait, what color do I want to do? What have I done Uh-oh. around it? Hold on. The pressure's on you now. orange here, a nice big fat red. That's the cool pink color. Right under here is also the cool pink color. So maybe, I don't care. I'll let you guys pick. pick red. color. I'm going to say cool pink color. All right. There you go. I was going to say orange. Ooh. You know what? I'll do cool pink color and fade it into orange. How about that? Okay. So Tinkerbell actually commented and said, new habits and techniques can bring you new money. Girl. Which is totally true. So yeah. hopefully hopefully our roundabout answer um, was anywhere close to what she was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. We, we get very thorough next? answers. Um, thorough. All right. Yeah, Dre, next what's question. the next one? Amy at Moxie Salon. What is the best way to go about looking for, looking for and hiring an assistant? I am a booth rent renter, renter and at the point where I need an assistant to keep growing and making sure my clients are well taken care of. What wording would you recommend if I were to post on Facebook to get the word out? Ooh, look at that's that. That's a good question. Um, I think I would what Oh, I would almost try to seek out now that you can on your own somebody. Yeah. That's <laughs> um, because places. you could tell a lot by anyone's information out there or pictures how hungry and how creative yeah. they are. So wait, Matt, already. do you want them to show up with a resume? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. No, but that that's a fantastic um, idea is looking, you can find everyone. Like we follow people constantly. I, I could name off almost when I see pictures coming through, I know mm-hmm. whose work that is. Right. And there's so many hungry people out there. Like you're saying, you could find somebody right through Instagram, do a hashtag of haircutting and the town and the great thing about that which really excites me is the fact that if you find somebody like that then they're already smart enough to post like that right so that means that mm-hmm. that's the probably the person you want by your side you want somebody like when i think about the the person that i would like to have working with me, me. is somebody that <laughs> <laughs> somebody that is like one step ahead already right you know like i can teach you how to do hair right but but you can teach me something as well. You could teach me social media. So I would start searching posts, find somebody local in your area. That's a great uh, thing. We should create a video on that. And I think you just did. And do it that way. Well, yeah, say, but like a short check one. Out, um, Compact. Check out the local schools in your area. Go to their Facebooks and Instagram and see whose work they're posting in or reposting in from it's the true. That's yeah. a way to find it's a good call to player. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same like thought process going. Right. Yeah, yeah. But that's mm-hmm. an easy way to get in there and find them is to go to the school and see who they're posting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next question. Maybe. I'm done. You're done. Do you want to break that down real quick? Like just show it, twist it. Turn yes. It. Work it. Twerk it. Hold on. Let me t- flip this so I can see it. Better. So I can see how it's. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And it'll focus, Brian, if you get close. 
So here's her pretty face. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you just stay where you are. I'll stay. Okay. <laughs> I, it, I don't know what to do. All right. All right. There you stand go. Right here. All right. So here I've got my Stewie Griffin section right here with two foils in there just to keep it nice and broken up. But the, uh, yeah. And then I've got my halo of foils. Now maybe you can see it a little better because it's the hair is down where it just goes along that hairline where I've got alternating between the yellow and the hot pink. Uh, and then I just came in here and went in between my foils and took nice big sections, some smaller, some bigger, just to create more dimension throughout. Uh, applied my color, smashing it into that root to make sure that it's gonna have that nice blend. Pulled it through, worked it through all the sections, twisted it out of my way, then I'm just letting it hang. Obviously she has no back, she has no shoulders, so that's fine. Don't forget to keep it neat. I suggest cellophane so that it won't stick. I could put a towel, but if it's oversaturated, it might stick to it and then just make more of a mess. Um, she's probably going to process for like 20 minutes, and then I will wash her out. I'll probably give her a sweet blowout, maybe tomorrow morning, maybe tonight. Who knows? So obviously you're not going to see how this turns out unless you subscribe to all of us on Instagram because then we'll all post it tomorrow. Will you wash her out any special way? Like do that first, then the foils, because um, the that, foils okay. are, the yellow That's is pretty really light. That's actually a question. So mm -hmm. when I washed this one out, I went through and used freezing cold water. Obviously, she's a mannequin, so she didn't care, but you're going to have to keep your guest semi-comfortable, uh, as cold as they can handle. I went through and washed all of the color tendrils out. I used a nice high pressure to the water to try to hurry up and just get it out of the hair as fast as I could so that it wouldn't have a whole lot of time to mix into the other ones. And then after that was starting to run as clear as can be expected, then I took out the foils and rinsed each of them together. Uh, with this one, I think what I'm actually going to do is I think I'm going to take her highlights out first and then just rinse it all together because the yellow is very yellow. And it wasn't until after I did the foils and then started to put that really, really red root. When I see red and yellow that close together, I just think McDonald's. So I'm going to rinse it all at once so that maybe that red bleeds into the yellow just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more depth so it's not quite as yellow crayon vibrant yellow. But because I don't know if you can see, I mean, that's like no joke yellow. I just got hungry. Super yellow. Ba -da -ba -ba -da. <laughs> all right so yeah it's really if you want to make sure like if you want to keep that highlight color off of everything else then yes go through rinse the head first uh and then do the highlights afterwards as little shampoo as possible obviously try to go with something color safe try to use stuff that has a low ph most of your um product knowledge manuals or books or somewhere ask an educator or somebody they'll let you know of your lines what tends to have lower pH in your shampoo and conditioner because that'll just help to make sure that the cuticle stays down, which will keep the color in there because that's going to help make it last longer. Sweet, Brian. All right, if you guys have any questions, um, make sure that you post them uh, in the live chat for Brian uh, as we kind of finish up here. Dre, do you want to do, let's do like two more questions. What time is it? Um, 8.57. Let's do one more question uh, from Instagram. And then I'll spin. And then what I want you guys to do while we're p picking up a question, while Dre is picking the best question that happened uh, on Instagram today, post on right now live. So we have 94 people on um, at this moment. So thank you, all 94 of you, for watching. Make sure that you hit that share button. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> but post so let's do it this way post in the comments right now where you're watching from i'd like to see that and then um we're gonna choose somebody from the uh from the list to spin the wheel for all right so make sure you start posting where you're watching right now from all right so our next question is do you feel social media has exposed more artists today or do you feel Instagram is key to know if you're good enough determining your followers? To do what to your followers? Determining your followers based off of based off of followers. Yeah, can yeah. you judge how good so, you are based off of how many followers? Real funny are? story. So I, yeah. um, I mean, I guess it's funny. I don't really know if it's funny, but um, hilarious. 
That Chris, was actually the example. Christina just said about. she's awesome and no one follows her. So um, it's the example I was thinking of too. So here's the thing. I it's really funny because I uh, I've been working with and Christina has been helping as well. We've been working with companies on growing their social, right? Good job. Christina. And uh, so we've been working with all these companies to help them grow. And uh, I was actually sitting in a meeting and I said, uh, you know wow, you've done a great job. You have 2,500 followers. That's pretty good for not really trying. And then right away it was, um, yeah, we paid, we paid for those. So I personally, I, it has nothing to do. We'll start with, it has nothing to do with the amount of followers that you have. Uh, if you look at a lot of people that have a lot of followers, there's a reason that they ended up with those followers, whether they paid for them or not, but you're going to notice it's all about the reaction of people. So a lot of times when I'm talking to you guys Quality, out there. not quantity. Remember yeah. the most popular kid in high school? He was a douche. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a lot of friends. He did have a lot of friends, friends. but everybody talked about him behind his back. Exactly. So that, yeah. So uh, the, the moral one. of it is. It's all about the, the quality of the people that you have. Uh, how do they interact with you? If they really like you, like an, a number can add up, right? A, a number, um, and a lot of people get a following in one way, and then they completely shift their, their thought process, and they do something else. You, you have to cater to uh, the people that are following you. Is he behind me? There's always exceptions, because no. there are a lot of people on Instagram that have a lot of followers that are really good. Really good, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. that's... Really good, right. <laughs> Like really so, good. And they deserve it, right? So, but you'll see that. You you yeah, see. The they make one post the and then hundreds of thousands of people like it right away. Like, there, so there is, you're going to see different, you know, different things. But you can pay for a following. So no one cares about that number except for maybe getting some free products in the mail. Uh, so if you're looking to get free products in the mail, really? buy some people on Facebook. Or just buy the products. Or just buy the products. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's if an you, ego. Yeah, it's, it's an, an ego. ego. Right. Come on. So. Uh, and then the other question was, what about the Instagram, though? There was another part to that. I want to answer that last one, but we don't necessarily uh, need to do it. Do now. they bring out artists? Do you think that social media has brought out new artists? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, and Absolutely. I think we kind of, yeah, we did touch on that. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you look at any kind of social media, like there is somebody that is mastering that platform yeah. uh, in the hair and industry And it goes for somehow. the same. I've seen some Instagram, you know, followed somebody with, like, 200 follow like followers but they're awesome yeah you know just yeah i'm gonna tell you right How now, now every company every <laughs> company that i sit in with talking about their social media they're looking for people with a social media following to help them like it it has become the most powerful thing that you can have is a, a good group that actually reacts to things so if you think about it's not about the number but if you have a thousand followers and you make a post and 900 of them react to that post, then you have a great following that loves you. Um, if you have a thousand followers and one person likes it, mm. you can pretty much tell that somebody paid for it. Or a hundred thousand followers and 30 people like your post, or like some big companies have a million followers and a hundred people like their post. Like you could tell who paid for it and who actually has a core audience. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's all about. But Instagram has definitely – every platform of social media, I mean, you look at the job opportunities, the things that um, that we've done, the things that all of these people have done. Look at Guy Tang is, as his own color at this point. He has a million followers on Instagram. He wouldn't have had any of those opportunities like that without building his own name on social media. So it's a pretty cool thing. It is pretty cool, and if you pay attention to it, you could see somebody just as talented and uh, because he's very talented as Guy Tang yeah. that does not have a bunch of fo like right. a following. Yeah. You know, so I think it totally brings oh, out thanks for all saying. artists. And the cool the cool <laughs> thing is over, too like Guy Tang's not for everyone either even though, you know, he has over a million followers, but some people uh, like different things. So, I think the cool thing about social media is that it has allowed you to pick and choose individually who you like. Your it's, type. Yeah your type of person so you can follow and get inspiration it's it's the best thing that could have happened and the people that talk about social media and the internet now how young the internet is it's like 15 years old right so they they talk about how we haven't even seen the beginning of what the internet really is going to be so people that's anything tech 
technology. It is, yeah. yeah. Like they've but said that since very young, you know. If you're a hairdresser out there and you're you're young, maybe you're in school. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you start. I would start right away trying to, you know, put your name out there. And because the more you put yourself out there, the more people will follow, and then you're gonna be able to do what you want with your career later on. But right? if you if you wait, it's not gonna happen. Like Drea needs right. to make her professional Instagram page. I, I'm but like you said, the content <laughs> has to be it has to be quality or right. no one's gonna engage with you exactly. on the, they'll follow you, but there will be no response. Right. But to there's your no point content. like but people should not be discouraged thinking that maybe their stuff isn't good enough. Oh no, no, right. not at all. Right. Right. So just post it and you'll get reactions from people. You'll find out what people like and what they don't, and then you just grow from there. But definitely um, if this is something you're interested in, I would start posting and just sharing and you get better that way. I mean, you get better because you want your work to look better and you want, so you make a post and you're like, ah, I wish that would have been better. And then next time you make it better. So, and you get like deep in the whole, Oh, 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 look at their, Oh, look at them. Oh, look at them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. So let's, all right, cool. That. So let's see, what do we got here? Where's, where's everyone from? That's what I really want to know all right i think they started oh my gosh pennsylvania oh london God. portland oregon south texas tennessee new york pottsville pa that's close right well, we could practically bring that camden new jersey locals How are you picking? i'm just i just enjoy this just seeing all this all right so i'm gonna pick by just scrolling through Huh? I'm going to scroll through and I'm going to pick somebody. I don't care where they are. And then hopefully, so here's the deal. Some of these companies don't ship all over the world, but I don't want to exclude people that live all over the world. So if for some reason they won't ship to you, we'll ship you something cool, right? Cool. Okay. So trimmings from Thad's beard. There's no trimmings from my beard. Here, Thad, just stop stuff. it somewhere. Portland, Oregon. Oh, Alex. Fun. Markovic. Who is that? Alex Markovic. Since I picked, I guess, man, right? All right, Maybe so on the, on the Don't wheel, let's give a little – let's give some love to the people that are on the wheel because they really help make free salon education happen. So we have uh, – Hold on. I got this part. Okay. We, 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 <laughs> oh. we, 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 we got Sunlights. We got Jay Lace. We got Olaplex. We got Parker. We, we, we got Ergo. Why do you oh, like Olaplex? Oh. Why do you like Olaplex? Oh, I thought we were just listing it off. No. Oh, I love Olaplex. How would we have these fun colors without Olaplex? <laughs> you, you you heard Brian talk about how light you have to get these. Okay, uh, I like this hat. So Thad wasn't at the Ergo meeting this morning, but what do you love about Ergo? Ergo? I love Ergo. Uh, Ergo's brushes are a little bit larger, so you can take larger sections, but still have an effective uh, means of styling the hair. So awesome. that way. You're styling the hair faster, which means it's less effort on your body. Okay. What Hence, about Ergo? Donald Scott. Lace. What's that? Jay Lace has uh, some really cool uh, hairstyle gear for you to wear in the salon or anywhere else. Yeah, and, and Justin's in the, like pi stuff. the modeling pictures. Yeah, if you want to see him, go to their webpage. <laughs> um. Donald Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Scott. Donald Scott has a uh, awesome tool called the Carving Comb that you may have heard of. Uh, he's got a lot of other ones uh, called like the Twist. We got the DSX Razor for hairlines. Chopstick. The yeah. Chopstick. Heck yeah. And uh, what is awesome about uh, Donald Scott's uh, tools is that they're designed to uh, not only be able to cut hair with a razor, but to then also be able to go through with shears as well. Yeah, so, so I think you, that's pretty so awesome. So you have a comb in your hand, and so you have a razor, scissors, and a comb all at the same time. Yep. The <laughs> other great thing about Donald Scott is that and they want everyone to know, because I did have a meeting with them this week, is that a lot of people think – so it used to be the Paul Mitchell carving comb because okay. Paul Mitchell had uh, partnered up with Donald Scott. That partnership um, – they separated. So Donald Scott is Donald Scott. Donald Scott's Donald Scott, but this is the – yeah, this is the original. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Paul Mitchell was producing the carving comb. Now now Donald Scott <laughs> – Donald Scott, it's the original. It is it, – he's actually stepped it up, so now it's made with even yeah, the, 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 the metal. metal. Exactly. Yeah. yeah the, the products are a lot more uh, durable. Like if you drop it, you're probably going to put a chip in your floor, so don't drop them. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Minerva. Sad. Minerva. Minerva is our uh, salon uh, supply company. How Whether do you guys you... like the Minerva furniture here? Oh, I love it. I think it's pretty. It's comfy. It's nice. 
Well, you can get it for Minerva. What, 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 what more <laughs> well, do we want? Well, 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 well for Minerva, <laughs> we, we, we have our towels. We have the towel oven. We have our kind stool. We have our stations and our chairs. Yeah. And the uh, tool stations. Yep. Yeah. All right. The we only thing Minerva. we don't have is the salon itself for Minerva. <laughs> <laughs> Minerva, can you work on that? Yes. Salon in a box. All right. Uh, FSC is going to give away Super Silk. Super Silk or Brian Hair. Oh, no. We're giving away Vibrastrate Iron. Uh, Vibrastrate yeah, or Brian Hair. We changed oh, yeah. it up. Or me. Or Brian. Um, uh, Sunlights is great for uh, the balayage. It's, it's going to give you a lot of different tones uh, in the highlights uh, because it's going to hit the hair differently. So the strokes that you have that are a little bit heavier are going to be a little bit lighter than the uh, spots that don't have as much light. Yeah. All right. Mainstream is giving away 100% of their uh, of your service dollars for the month. So Mainstream is basically for the styles on the go. <laughs> okay. Amika. <laughs> Amika's, <laughs> Amika's got... It's for the client on the go and the stylist on Wait, the go. Wait, why exactly. did Skip had this job when we were looking for this to go quickly? I know. <laughs> I like this. Uh, no, it is good. Uh, Amika good. is great. It's got a lot of uh, great uh, pro tools uh, that you can not only have uh, in the salon, but they, I believe they also have the, the take-home stuff for... Uh, yeah, for take-home s- products. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Okay. Uh, then we're back to Olaplex. We already talked about them. Mizutani. And then we've got the uh, shears that will take off uh, the hair on your client's head and your fingers if you're not careful. So, uh... <laughs> all right. God, why aren't you in advertising? <laughs> all right. And that's it. Good job, Thad. All right. Turn around with all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Alex is spinning the wheel from Portland, Oregon. I'm so psyched for him. This is way too Thank long. you for Forget being it. on live. <laughs> Here we go. He's like, never mind. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'm going to spin the camera around so we can see. It's tight. Okay. Toit like a tiger. Oh, it's tight enough. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Yep. Drea, are you seething right now? No. Good <laughs> job. Oh! I told you it wasn't tight enough. <laughs> Nobody listens to me around here at all, and this is proof. I think I saw it earlier, is and the I wheel was... is rebelling against Brian. <laughs> Brian, Brian you, just stick it back in. Stop. Just Drea has in. to spin it. Brian, you have to learn. <laughs> I told you. It hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no. no. Sunlights. Okay, here. I'm going <laughs> to put that. It was a good prize. Let's do one more thing. One more question? Yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> he could have had sunlights. That was a Let good prize. Let me pull that back up because I left that area. <laughs> okay, so another question. Push it up a little I've bit. I've never worked with it. I don't know. Obviously, I don't like a type. Uh, okay. What inspired you to start FSE? Oh no. Oh, yeah, ask me a question. <laughs> Sorry. <man. laughs> um. All right. Never mind. We'll move on. Was thirty six divided uh, by. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh. Never mind. We're good. Okay. Brian's just gonna. Spin. Should I spin again? Yeah. Right. Just go ahead. Let's wish spin. you. Do wish me luck Alex. again. Ready? Yeah. This time the wheel's just gonna fall off. All right. That's good. Nice spin. I'm so strong. Ted, that's why I should have put it a little lower. (laughs) Fortune? Uh oh. Oh, Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. What's it going to be? I'm just going to say, I really want to give away. Yes. That's pretty appropriate for this uh, episode. Is that really? (laughs) All right, Alex, congratulations. Olaplex. So all you have to do is email. Contest at freesaloneducation.com. Uh, send us your address and we will send it to Olaplex and they're going to send you a stylus kit so you can uh, have Olaplex in your salon, which would be really cool. Um, anything else? That was fun. What are we doing next week, boss? That was really fun. Um, next week, uh, another haircut. So uh, every other week is a haircut. And then we have Drea coming up with uh, some styling, and we have Thad with a pixie. So we'll figure out what's coming next. But Thad wants to do a haircut as well, which is going to be really fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Brian's class and uh, FSE Live. Don't forget to check the the, the Yeah. Go to our Instagram, Free Salon Education. Also, uh, you can follow everybody else, which will get their Instagram. But do that for tomorrow because we'll post the – the final result of the mannequin as well. Follow Brian Hair. Hairstyle. H A I R E style. Thad. Thad bonus. Dre Day 2289. 
Christina underscore Steeny. And follow us, Everything Free Salon Education. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.